The road to Emmaus story has always been one of my favorites, though I'm not sure whether that's in spite of or because of its wild strangeness. It is an Easter story. In fact, we're told it takes place the very afternoon of the resurrection, but it carries a weight of sadness and uncertainty. Just as Mary Magdalene did not recognize Jesus at the empty tomb until he called her by her name, the men on the road don't recognize their companion. Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus makes no effort to reveal himself. Instead, he asks them to tell their story. They're reluctant at first. They stand still looking sad. But they tell him what happened. And then they tell him where things went wrong for them. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. But we had hoped. I don't know about you, but I can feel that statement deep in the pit of my stomach. I think it's one we all recognize. But we had hoped the cancer wouldn't return. We had hoped the marriage would last. We had hoped the pregnancy would be viable. We had hoped for more time, another chance, better news. We had hoped for graduation ceremonies, for long-awaited travel, for steady employment, for safety and security. We had hoped, we had hoped. In what is perhaps my favorite short story, The Birth of Water Stories by Catherine Foz, the protagonist is hoping for a miracle and the miracle she is hoping for is a child. When her husband dies in a sudden accident, she hangs all her hope on the idea that she is pregnant with his child, but she doesn't get this miracle. Instead, she gets bats swooping and soaring at sunset and a compassionate waiter in the simplicity and beauty of story. It isn't what she longed for. Her husband is gone with no piece of him to march bravely on into the future. And yet the bats and the waiter and the story sparkle with hope, mark the first light of a kind of rebirth. The author ends the story with these words, what are your miracles and how are they different from the ones you planned for? Please tell me, you must tell everyone. The men on the road to Emmaus tell Jesus their story, their hopes, their uncertainties, and Jesus listens. Jesus listens as it all pours out until there isn't any more to tell. And then it's Jesus' turn. Jesus tells their story back to them, but changes it. Now it is a story of prophecy fulfilled, of scripture brought to life, of hope. And then Jesus leaves it there for them to accept or not. If they had let him go, had not insisted he accept their hospitality, they might never have recognized him. It is in the act of breaking bread that Jesus' identity is revealed in a flash, and just as soon he vanishes. This is another part of the story that feels so familiar. How often do we walk along life's road unable to see Jesus walking beside us, retelling to us our stories of pain as stories of meaning and hope? How often do we see Jesus only after the fact and then just as quickly lose sight of him? It can be frustrating when all we want is a straight look, a moment to fix ourselves on that point of brilliant clarity. But it can also be holy when we can look back on all those times our hearts were burning within us and see them for what they are. When we can recognize the miracles that are and not the ones we planned for. This part of the story is also a poignant one right now. Jesus was revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. The Eucharistic imagery is inescapable. Indeed, this text is the basis of a fraction anthem that you may know. I've been unable to get it out of my head all week. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The sacrament of Holy Eucharist has become one of the primary places I turn to experience and recognize Jesus. Perhaps you feel the same. And now we are unexpectedly fasting from our usual celebration, but we had hoped it would be otherwise. If we are not breaking bread together, will Jesus simply continue to go unnoticed, unrecognized? 
perhaps, if we let ourselves become too wrapped up in what we had hoped for and those miracles we had planned for. But perhaps we can let Jesus retell our story. Perhaps we can be open to the miracles we didn't plan for. Breaking bread together was a simple everyday matter. Jesus wasn't revealed in bright lights and fanfare. Jesus was revealed in a small, caring act. Breaking bread can look like sharing communion, but it can also look like a hot cup of coffee on the porch, a text or a phone call just to check in, a pat to a dog's head, a deep and cleansing breath. We had hoped things would be different, but even so, Jesus walks beside us. Even when we cannot recognize him, are not our hearts burning within us? Let's share our stories our hopes and our fears. Jesus is listening. We are listening too. What are your miracles and how are they different from the ones you planned for? Please tell me. You must tell everyone.